We try to keep up. It's a, it's a big time for all the bourbon distillers now that uh, people come to Kentucky, and it's no longer just to see a horse race and to socialize, but it's to go on the bourbon trail, to visit the distilleries, to taste bourbon. And uh, so, so we spike up the uh, employment at the distillery. It's the biggest tour day we have, and we have some huge ones during the year. Mm -hmm. How do you make the perfect mint julep? It is not possible to make a good mint julep one at a time. Hmm. Okay, you have to make them by the batch. Okay, so you have to anticipate usage. And this, the second thing is you have to take the mint, spearmint, young tender spearmint, you have to take the time to take it off the stalk, because that's where all the acids are. Right. Take the little leaves, millions of them it seems like, two, three, or four hours, it's, it's a huge pain in the rear end, <laughs> but it is essential. Take a nice, clean t-shirt that you've washed, mm -hmm. and make mint extract with that fresh mint. Hmm. So that when you start, you start with three liquids. Simple syrup, one-to-one -one simple syrup, good bourbon, and uh, mint extract that you've made from that you've personally made. Okay, and uh, uh, you start with the simple syrup. It's about uh, uh, six to eight to one, and then uh, the mint whiskey. You add it to taste. You read a lot about a bourbon shortage going mm -hmm. on. Is there a bourbon shortage? Well, it, we'll say the same thing, and that is demand surprised us. It's it's ticked up at about twice the rate that we expected. We all were In very the last optimistic. Two years? Yeah, it really started about five, six years ago. Okay. And we've all expanded operations. It's expensive, cash flow wise. Right. Uh, but we, at Makers, uh, we can tolerate growth of up to 10% a year. And we have been managing to that rate for 40 years. Hmm. So, uh, it's just the opposite from, we don't deal well with fads in this industry. We deal well with long, sustainable trends. And with makers, we have sustained a 10% growth over about the last 41 years. And that's, that's what's available going forward. Problem is the international market is now picked up on bourbon. It's, you're starting that's to see right. it on the top shelf of the, uh, the wonderful watering holes around the world. That was not anticipated. We're really a good example of, because uh, we don't have the greatest marketing skills in the world. We're pretty good at listening. And when people start telling us they would like to have some makers, if we hear it enough, then we figure out a way to get distribution worked out. Right. And so most of our international business has come as a result of pull. We still hand dip every single bottle in the wax that mom developed. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, it's very personal. It's very much a craft. And we think because there's so much authenticity and craft and heritage that this will stretch out for a long period, unlike right unlike some of the trends people like to uh, jump on and then jump off. What goes into making Maker's Mark whiskey? I mean, how's the, what is the process exactly like? Should it's got to be corn. It's better if the water and, and the grain come from the same soil. So uh, local grain's better. Uh, limestone water is essential. That's why it's all in the same place. Mm -hmm. Limestone water, no oxide, ferrous oxide. And then you have small grains, most... Uh, use rye, we use wheat, and then you have your malted barley for the enzyme mm -hmm. generation, and uh, then you distill it, then you put it in an American oak barrel that has been charred right. for a minimum of four years, mm -hmm. but really it reaches balance in six to seven years, and then you try to sell it. 